Welcome. So finally, I guess uh, all the Linux problems are like there are lots of Linux problems, but a couple of them actually we could deal with. But I think it's fine now. Okay, seems good. Okay. Uh, May I introduce uh, to you Stefan Tiron, who is here from Romania, from Bucharest. And in fact, he is the first Romanian ever to speak at the CCC uh, Congress. I actually like that. I have to. Uh, because uh, he is pretty much like, like a double agent, I would say. A double agent, a cyberpunk aficionado. He's an art curator. He's a pretty interesting. A uh, weird, wonderful guy with lots of contacts. If you want to do some interesting things in Romania, please contact Stefan Tiron. He's like the networker in Romania. So, a uh, wonderful, warm, and emotional welcome for Stefan Tiron. Thank you, Johannes. Thank you for smuggling me here in. So, I don't know, maybe it's not that important who I am or what my name is. Uh, it's just a fact that I'm coming from Romania and um, yeah, that's a, a good sign. Uh, and I was, uh, I guess, you know, we should start with uh, beginnings. In uh, 1989, at the time of the Romanian Revolution, I was 13 years old. And probably you know some things about it. Do you know about what happened in uh, 1989 in Romania? Yeah, that's about it. It was the, the first or the only violent uh, change in the East. Um, It was a private company, even prior to that. Um, and um, I have to say that, uh, just repeat this fact that uh, it was the only dictatorial couple who was executed, uh, not by the people, but at least by the sons of the people who were part of the army at that time. Uh, some of the last words of uh, Ceausescu and Elena were, uh, why do you want to kill us, my sons? And uh, I think you still remember the shocking photos that ran through the media at that, uh, at that time. Uh, I think we have a problem, an intrusion here. Uh, okay. Just have to. Okay. So at the time I was 13 and going with my father on the main street in Bucharest when the revolution started. It was a demonstration for uh, the dictator, for Ceausescu, uh, that was uh, happening uh, a few dozen meters away from us in uh, Piazza Universității, the University Plaza. At the time, I was going with my father to search for a microscope. Uh, that was what I, I always wished for, a microscope. And um, in December, at that time, I was going with him to, to look for this uh, instrument. But a few meters away, we could see a cloud in the back and hear shootings. People were running from that direction and crying, some of them, and everybody entered uh, into the shops that were lining the, the main street and trying to hide the way inside the, the shops. Uh, my father wanted to go towards the cloud, but I sort of managed to pull him away and telling him, you know, maybe you should go home. He didn't go home. 
he just went to to where his atelier was, uh, which was near the TV station, where, which was a, a next center of conflict at that time, because there were three major points, let's say the uh, TV station, the Piazza Universitati, the center, and the Ministry of Defense. This was in Bucharest in December. And so when we, we started splitting, because I went home, he went to the TV station, some buses came by. Uh, I, we could see these buses, and out of it came Securitate or army guys who were cutting off the, the street so that people could not uh, escape. But we managed to pull through. And this was uh, that day that probably will stay with me. And uh, I had to say this because it sort of brings about some of uh, my background. But also, you should check out a film, which I, I think it's some, one of the best ever made about uh, revolution on TV, which is a videogram of a revolution by Harum Faruqi. You should really, really check that out, because he sort of took all the reels, the news reels, everything that was running on TV at the time, and sort of analyzed that. All what went on was, was sort of analyzed by, by Harum Faruqi. Today, I'm going to talk about technology transfer, surveillance technology and traffic from the east to the west. This is a way of recognizing the importance and role of industrial espionage as a form of friendship. Uh, between, the, <laughs> between the East and the West after the Cold War and during the Cold War. Uh, after the December Revolution of 1989, Romania entered a new age of data sharing and high-level technological traffic and cooperation with the neighboring European countries. This paper is actually only a preamble to a handing over ceremony involving interested parties in the West and willing collaborators from the East. That's me. We do not want in any way to diminish the fact that this lecture is nothing but a simple formality. The main purpose being to implement and secure the application of one of our most important technological assets, Transylvanian optical rear view mirror technology that you can see here. As I will repeatedly point out to you, it is a safe, non-data retention surveillance technology it is cheap, recyclable, and totally follows the regulations of the DIY ethos. <laughs> the initiator of this technology transfer is my partner, Mr. Sebastian Big, from the region of Maramures, in the northwestern part of the country, as I merrily just acting as a representative of him here at the SIGINT conference. Currently, he has returned back to his native home area, which is a mining town uh, in the northwest of the country. It is an old mining town, uh, perhaps like more than 150 years old tradition of mining. Mr. Sebastian Big is an ecologically minded person and he's urging the pervasive use of this nature-friendly technology using only recyclable parts of cars or bicycles 
obtained at the local free market. In Romania, we feel we have gained a lot of precious knowledge about surveillance, internal security, safe data disposal, and data retention that we are willing to share in return for food and accommodation. <laughs> uh, two aspects make the Romanian connection a neglected but important one. Foremost is the fact that Romania developed one of the most pervasive and efficient secret services and counter-espionage agencies in the modern world, as you just mentioned. The infamous securitate, meaning security in Romania. Romania was also one of the most bugged countries in the world. The amount of telephone bugging is even now hard to assess. And we know that all of the telephone, postal, telegrams, faxed messages going in and out of the country were intercepted and reported upon by the Securitate. Even now, for example, older generation friends or father of friends uh, have this problem, maybe a psychological effect of the amount of bugging going on. They don't answer the telephone. They just ask their sons to answer the telephone. If somebody, if the phone rings, they just tell them, you answer first and ask who's talking and listen if there is a click on the line. Private discussion inside houses and public spaces were also miked and under heavy surveillance. As an argument, we just have to consider the simple and very basic fact that in 1989, at the time of the Romanian Revolution, the Securitate had approximately 25,468 employees and CIA just 18,000. Secondly, Romania has always enjoyed and enjoyed even now an incredible high crime rate. <laughs> making it a living laboratory <laughs> for homegrown crime-fighting technologies and methodologies. It is notorious for its e-crime, especially in the area of infiltrating eBay and provoking most of the online auction fraud in recent years. As we can see, there are also two major directions, basically, in Romanian surveillance technology. One is the state-operated, top-down approach of the Securitate, and the other one we try to transfer and represent here is the local. The local one, it's grassroots, bottom-up approach. We have to also acknowledge the source of optical rear mirror surveillance technology. Transylvania was the developing ground and the source of this technology in Romania. Transylvania comprises the western part of Romania and has a very rich, diverse and multicultural background. Hungarians, Germans, Jews, Serbians and Romanians living for hundreds of years in a mostly harmonious way. This Transylvanian technology has spread to other places, such as the capital city of Bucharest, which lies to the south, with the help of newcomers settling in. In a typical story, one grandpa, while moving to Bucharest, started installing 
his rear view mirror surveillance system at his new house. That was one of the first things he did when he moved to the new big city. And this case is sort of repeated throughout uh, the history. I must say I feel guilty for a lot of things. But I don't feel guilty for providing vital data to a potential enemy. To share such data with a potential enemy will transform him into a potential friend and collaborator for future deals. In this sense, I think that such atom spies like Klaus Fuchs, Maurice Cohen, Harry Gold, David Greenglass, Theodore Hall, Ethel and Julius Rosenberg, Saville Sachs, and Morton Sobel should be considered heroes of the Cold War. They certainly risk their lives to transfer such precious information to the East. And during a period of mistrust, opacity, and the firewall mentality, they were the ones to freely distribute atomic technology and are to be seen as important, as important as their patriotic and ideologically poor, pure counterparts at Los Alamos. One of the side effects of that was that Romania, under the former president, Nicolae Ceausescu, was probably preparing a nuclear revolution of its own. Under the program at Atoms for Peace, Ceausescu started building nuclear power plants that could have, could have supplied energy for half of the country. If not for that unfortunate event in 1989 when the couple got shot. For me, it was much easier to, to come here. It was basically just uh, the fault of one man uh, that uh, made, me, made me basically come here and uh, facilitated uh, this uh, technological transfer. in the framework of a conference. Technological transfer from East to the West and vice versa comes as a welcome finale to the post-Cold War era. As signatories of a contract, because I'm here to, to, to find a partner and to, to sign a contract with him, we will engage ourselves to actively install in the near future this back to the roots, traditional, nature-friendly, cheap and efficient surveillance technology nearly everywhere in the West. We can install this technology everywhere, in your apartments, your houses and your cities. We can offer you in-depth knowledge about how to install rear view window surveillance technology also inside or outside high rise buildings situated on private or public space. I must say that we encounter the problem. Uh, there is a minor problem that uh, you know, if you look inside the mirror, you are seeing, you know, the enemy. But you also see yourself. Uh, so there is always, you know, it, it sort of lacks this uh, panopticon uh, element where, you know, the surveillor is not supposed to be seen. But we, we solved this problem. If you are interested in debugging the system, just uh, talk with me later. 
I have been searching for a trustworthy partner in the West, and I think I found one. And I think I found one here. Please, Mr. Johannes, step in and let's help make a change in surveillance technology everywhere. Yes, we should uh, memorize the, the, the moment. I just need from the public one, uh, one pen, if you have one to spare, and uh, which I can borrow and can give back to you. Ultra fine. So, yes, these are the plans. Okay. And uh, take care. Okay. Uh, this actual um, object was given by President Comrade Kim Il Sen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, just remember that this object was given by Kim Il Sen to my mother in 1987. So, take care. Okay. Uh, I just have this small uh, film for you now, which is sort of, uh, you know, tries to, to get you involved and addicted to this new surveillance technology. Everything runs smooth. Does it work? Kit keres? Pázmány Károly. A polgármesteri hivatal szociális osztályától jöttem. Egy felmérést kellene kitölteni. Milyen? Started again because it sort of started in the middle. I don't know why. Kit keres? Pázmány Károly. A polgármesteri hivatal szociális osztályától jöttem. Egy felmérést kellene kitölteni. Milyen felmérést? Hogy mivel tölti a szabad idejét, mivel foglalkozik. A polgármester úgy küldött ajándékcsomagot is. Hát a polgármester urat mi lehet -e, hogy ajándékokat küld? Holland segély. Órákat és narancsszörpöket kaptunk adományként. Neve? Pázmány Károly Albert. Lakcím? Kolozsvár, Bássa utca 11, második emelet, hármas ajtó. Személy száma? Azt meg kell nézzem. Kávét nem kér? Nesz. Köszönöm.
1. Horns Nulls 03. 12. 120. 658. Mi volt a foglalkozása? Portás voltam a kontinentál szállóban. <tos> 31 évig voltam portás. Ott áll felakasztva a sapka, amit viseltem. Gyermekei száma és tartózkodási helye. Három. Szétszóródtak a világban. London, Milano, Vancouver. Vancouverben most reggel van. Milyen gyakran látogatják Önt? Jól van? Jól érzi magát? A dobozból két fehér. I hope you got the message. that uh, I was the receiver of this new or old technology from Romania. So could you tell us a little bit about uh, the background and your colleague in, in Romania? Did he actually invent this protocol or is it like a thing that just emerged over time or what could you tell us a little bit more about the historical context of this system of using rear mirrors from cars to surveil? Well, I think uh, he had the brilliant idea uh, to sell out uh, this technology. Uh, this technology was always there uh, in a form or another in uh, the houses, the traditional houses in, in Romania. And uh, he always wanted to, 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 to use me uh, as, a, as a mediator for this uh, transfer. Okay. So in the film, in the end, in the film, you see that it's a quite complex system of like, like 
you know, ropes connected to mirrors so you could flip them and... Yeah, it's uh, actually, you know, it can get quite complex. Uh, don't, don't get, uh, you know, uh, I don't think it's, it's simple. Uh, it may look simple. It, it may look, you know, like the traditional uh, old mirror-based technology coming down from the Greeks. Uh, but uh, it actually involves a lot of moving parts and uh, can, can be quite adjustable as well. What's, what's the most complex of these systems you know in Romania or have, or have heard about it in Romania? Well, How many mirrors does it involve? Uh, the, this, this one, for example, is, is quite complex. And uh, it's, it's uh, from uh, Cluj, uh, from uh, Cla uh, uh, Klausburg in, in uh, Transylvania and uh, it involves, I don't know, like maybe dozens, dozens of, of, of mirrors. That are connected through like strings? And yeah. Oh my. You, you can imagine, I mean, just to have an idea, also in the pyramids, uh, they, they use this sort of uh, mirroring systems just to get the light inside the, the shafts. So it has different, different origins. Uh, well, my question would be, what are your export capabilities so in respect to the flu markets in Romania and Transylvania? If, well, if we are interested here in the West to, to purchase the technology from you? Well, this, this cap capacities are basically unlimited. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't want to, you know, like, it's, I, I don't think it's the place to, to exaggerate uh, here. Um, but I think uh, that we have a lot of destroyed industries. In, in Romania, like, basically the car industry is breaking down and uh, all of these parts are readily available to everybody who is interested. Uh, also, uh, you know, like a lot of people are buying a lot of cars. For example, Bucharest apparently is one of the highest cities with cars pro capita in the world. So everybody now owns a, a car and, you know, has a lot of wi mirrors that uh, one can use. We don't have so many bicycles. This, this is a problem. It's actually something new. So is the, like the world economic crisis actually helping you supplying us with like car mirrors? Definitely, and, and even the revolution, you know, one of the side effects was that a lot of the industry was sold. I mean, it, it, it was moved to the West I mean, and, and other parts in, in the world. It, it's, it sort of was immediately transferred. Uh, because, uh, I mean, I have to, 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 to tell you that most of it was non-functional. Uh, but <laughs> it, still, it still found interested parties in, in the West. Uh, I mean, they could do something with it. They could extract something out of it. Uh, and here I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you the, the whole. The, 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 the way to do it, you know, like. Well, well obviously, of course, there's, there's two more questions. One question would be, uh, what is the estimated time frame from planning, um, you know, reviewing uh, uh, an object, making plans and installation? So what's the total time frame, total time frame from customers interested until installation is done? And what's an estimated price for it, and of course the question is, what's the website for this? What's, what's your URL? Well, I mean, it, it we actually, and, and like a practical approach could be, would it be possible for you to construct a working system that we actually could install in Germany, for example, in December at a 26 C3 in Berlin, a working system? Uh, or you buy in an apartment, maybe. Or in an apartment somewhere there, yeah. Of course. Uh, <laughs> So, the, just going back to your question, uh, till now we didn't find any, any, any partner, but we found one. And uh, this will actually be the, um, 
the the ground, you know, the the the, the ground where everything will be proven. Okay. I'll, I'll set up a PayPal account and we can yeah. talk about. It. We actually don't trust, you know, like online uh, banking, <laughs> be, be, because 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 there are so many infiltrators. My, my uh, grandmother has a really nice uh, and interesting like wooden stable uh, mm -hmm. in Lower Austria. We can use the stable as like a deposit box for any kind of transfer. So it's perfect, perfect. How did you solve the problem that looking back through the mirrors might be in a security uh, breach to this system? I mean, well, you mentioned well, that, that you I solved it. I, I'm not allowed to, to tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, it's a real, you know, like this is a real security breach, uh, and it's it it has to have some some confidentiality to it. Uh, also, I I think it, you know, the the, the amount of money and everything involved, uh, the payment or or any kind of payment or swap, uh, you know, this is also confidential. Uh, I cannot, you know, uh, tell you what it involves. Uh, just, you know, I, I, I just mentioned, you know, like food and accommodation, which I think is just fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. so, so you as the main distributor, what's the web, the web website uh, a customer, an interested customer can look into? So first of all, I have to go through all the documents that this uh, interesting uh, person from, uh, like Stefan Tiron, like actually I should not mention a name I know, but I have to go through the documents and then I think I'll have to find like a catchy phrase for it. Because like rear, like Transylvanian rear mirror surveillance technology, that sounds a little bit, it's too complex. We have to find a, like a brandable, marketable slogan for the Western societies, I guess. Something yeah, like I a think Dracula a system or something like that. That's yeah, it's, like it's a good, it's a good uh, way to approach it. Uh, I was trying to be as descriptive as possible. Okay. So, any more questions? So I, I guess we'll look forward to, to have then a complete demonstration at the uh, 2063 yeah, at the end of the year. It and would be interesting to see it, seeing it at the And maybe you can also give us a, a more detailed overview of uh, other related products uh, in this area. Certainly. Oh, one more question. Maybe a, maybe a good marketing name would be a Dracula, a Dracula, Dracula Panopticon. <laughs> <laughs> it's catchy. That's really catchy. I, I didn't actually want it to, 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 you know, to bring up, uh, uh, to bring up Dracula, you know, in this, uh, you know, equation, but uh, it was there, you know. <laughs> I, I guess if I were to posit that your, your solution to the, the, the problem of the viewer being viewed by the viewee, mm -hmm. it in some way deals with Vlad or Dracula. Would... <sighs> would it be advisable to begin investing in copious amounts of Knoblauch? <laughs> yes, garlic. Well, I've heard that uh, if you're an employee in Germany or, or, or Austria at a big corporation or a company uh, and you are eating uh, garlic, uh, this, this could become a severe problem. Uh, they, I mean, <laughs> this is what I've heard. I don't know if it's true. Uh, so uh, you might, you know, like uh, be kicked out or 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 get, uh, you know, like your everything might break down. At least to get a mark in your database. 
Yes. I think he's giving us a hint right there that the panopticon is a type of scope and scope is a cure for what garlic causes, which is halitosis. And so there's some connection between, I'm not sure. I think, uh, I think we have to end here because Mr. Stefan Tiron has a tight schedule and uh, if you want to get in contact with him, please use the next five or ten minutes uh, to talk to him in private or talk to me, no problem. But uh, soon he will be on the main stage over there uh, as a Romanian agent. So uh, thanks a lot, Stefan Tiron. A big applause. Thank you. Thank you for everything.